Hi there, I'm Matthew and I'm here with Pico Technology um, on the stand here at uh, ARMS 2023. Um, and uh, at ARMS, we've just released the new version of the Pico VNA5 software. Um, this is version 5.2.6. And uh, with 5.2.6, um, we've brought loads of new features uh, to do with uh, remote control of the Pico VNA instrument. Um, and uh, we've added a lot of new um, API functionality. Um, so in this video, I want to deep dive into some of that functionality. Um, we've just recorded a separate video on um, remote controlling the Pico VNA5 software via Skippy. Um, that's not what I'm going to be doing in um, this video. Um, so we're, we're not going to be doing much in the Pico VNA5 software itself. Instead, I'm going to be uh, controlling the uh, instrument directly um, via our powerful programming API. Um, now, you can obtain our programming API um, from our software development kit, which is uh, downloadable on the Pico Technology website. Um, and uh, within the software development kit, we have a lot of programming language bindings. Um, we have bindings for uh, Python, MATLAB, C++, um, and we're constantly growing the uh, number of languages that we have bindings available for um, as we're growing our really active community of users um, around the um, SDK and API. Um, and uh, all of the code that I write in um, this video is going to be available um, from the downloadable SDK. So the setup that I have um, here on the stand um, is I have a Pico VNA instrument that's just off camera, um, but that Pico VNA instrument is connected to the uh, Pico Technology Network Metrology Board. Um, and here um, the Pico VNA instrument is just measuring the um, bandpass filter um, that's available on the board. Um, so if I switch over to the Pico VNA5 software briefly, um, you can see um, that uh, we're measuring this bandpass filter. And um, we've got 60 B points at about um, 161 megahertz and about 220 megahertz. But um, as I said, what I want to do in this video is demonstrate the low level API control of this instrument. So uh, let's go ahead and close the Pico VNA5 software and um, instead open Python. Um, so uh, what I've done uh, is downloaded the SDK and um, copied over the libraries um, out, out that I need out of the SDK. Um, there are instructions for uh, doing all this within the um, SDK documentation. And I've also installed the VNA package from PyPy. Um, so uh, using pip3, um, I've installed the uh, VNA package. So let's just import that. Um, and uh, let's start off by connecting to the instrument. So um, let's, um, let's open that. Um, there we go, it's the correct version. And um, let's just uh, verify um, that I've uh, connected the ins correct instrument um, by printing out the um, serial of the instrument. Um, so um, there we go. Uh, I've printed out that I've got uh, the instrument with serial 09464 connected, and that is indeed the um, serial of uh, the instrument that's connected to my laptop via USB. Um, so let's go ahead and set up a simple measurement. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, create a measurement configuration. Um, and um, I'm going to... Um, uh, just add a simple uh, uniform frequency sweep, um, so a linearly spaced frequency sweep um, to that measurement configuration. Let's make that um, 1,001 points. Let's uh, start at um, uh, 300 kilohertz and let's stop at 8,500 megahertz. So sweeping over the um, full range um, of uh, the device bandwidth there. Uh, let's sweep with um, zero dBm uh, power level and um, 1,000 hertz bandwidth, uh, 1K bandwidth. Um, and uh, what I'm gonna do is um, just perform those measurements. So uh, let's do that. And um, the function that I'm using here, perform measurement, um, is uh, performing those uh, measurements synchronously. Um, so uh, it's going to return the results into a Python list. Um, 
I could have instead performed the function, uh, performed the measurements asynchronously, in which case um, the uh, function would have returned um, immediately. Um, I'd have used the start measurement instead of the perform measurement function to do that. Um, and then I could have processed the measurements um, point by point um, as they become available. Um, but this was a fairly fast sweep. Um, so uh, we could uh, run it uh, synchronously um, and get all the measurements back in this list. So uh, what I'm going to do is just print out some of these. Um, so uh, the measurements are all available in a uh, Python list. So let's uh, take the first point um, and let, let's just uh, print it out. Um, so uh, let's print out the uh, frequency of that point. Um, and uh, let's just print out the, uh, the 4s parameters. Um, uh, so there's S11, one, one. let's do S21. Um, this is going to print the 4s parameters in a real and imaginary format. Um, uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And um, there we have the measurements um, in real and imaginary format. But um, within the uh, Python API, um, we have a lot of uh, convenience functions as well. So um, let's say instead of printing these out in real and imaginary format, I wanted to print them out in um, logmag format. Um, so uh, if I want to print those out in DB, um, I can do that really easily. Um, so let's go ahead and do that for each of our four measurements. And there we have our measurements in dB. Um, so that was a simple linearly spaced frequency sweep. But um, what the API really allows us to do is access the low level functionality of the instrument. Um, so uh, I want to go on to uh, create a different sweep. Um, and uh, this is going to be a much smaller sweep. It's just going to be three points. Um, but I want to show how I can um, uh, measure at a different frequency and a different power level um, for each of those three points. Um, I'm going to, uh, this time, build up the measurement configuration um, point by point. Um, so let's uh, create our first point. And um, let's uh, create this at uh, a frequency of one gigahertz. Um, and uh, let's create, let's measure this with a power level of um, zero dBm, so that's what we had before. And um, let's uh, stick with our one kilohertz bandwidth. Um, and let's add that measurement point to the measurement configuration. Um, so uh, let's do this again, um, but uh, this time. Um, use a different frequency. Let's use a frequency of uh, 1,200 megahertz, and let's use a different power. Um, so let's give this one a power level of minus 10 dBm. Let's stick with our one kilohertz bandwidth as before, um, and let's add this point uh, to the uh, measurement configuration. Um, and then finally, I said we were going to do a three-point sweep, so let's add one more point. Um, Let's demonstrate uh, that we can add this at any frequency, so um, something that uh, isn't uniformly uh, spaced from the other two points. So put that in at 2 gigahertz. Um, let's use a power level of, um, I don't know, plus, uh, plus 10 dBm this time. And um, let's use the same bandwidth as before. Um, and let's finally add that point to our measurement configuration too. Um, so let's go ahead and um, perform those measurements. Um, I'll do it synchronously again. So we get the measurements back in um, a Python list. There we go. Um, it was faster this time because it's uh, only a three-point sweep. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and um, print those out, just like we did before. Um, so uh, Let's go back to where I had my printing function. There we go, printing these uh, points out in dB. Um, so there's our uh, one gigahertz point. Um, let's uh, take our 1.2 gigahertz point. There we go. We can see we've got a frequency of uh, 1,200 gigahertz, uh, or uh, 1,200 megahertz. Um, and then let's print out our uh, final point here, which had the frequency of uh, two gigahertz. 
Um, so there we go. Um, Hopefully what this video has demonstrated, uh, in part at least, uh, is that um, the programming API um, gives us, uh, is really powerful. Um, it gives us this low level access um, to the instrument. Um, here I've been uh, running um, via uh, Python on my uh, Linux based laptop. Um, I could have equally well uh, run this code um, on a Raspberry Pi um, or other embedded device um, or on uh, Windows or uh, Mac OS, just like the Pico VM. NA5 software, um, the uh, API is fully cross-platform. Um, as we've said, um, we can uh, download all of the uh, example code that I've written today, along with many other examples showing the uh, full capability of the API um, on the uh, Pico Technology website. Um, so, and uh, there's full documentation available in our um, uh, programming guides, um, one of which is available for uh, each language um, in which we have uh, bindings. So um, thanks for watching. Yeah.